In this webcast, we're going to take a survey of different types of aromatic heterocycles that we have yet to discuss. First, we're going to talk about fused ring systems, move on to two atom uh, heterocyclic systems, and multi atom heterocyclic systems. First, let's take a look at uh, furan and thiophene shown here. So, furan and thiophene are related in structure because sulfur lies directly below oxygen on the periodic table and thus has a similar electron configuration to oxygen. If we look at the, the two pictures of sulfur, of the sulfur and the oxygen, we see that each are sp2 hybridized, each have two lone pairs. Uh, in each case, one, one lone pair occupies a p orbital that contributes to the Pi system and the aromaticity of the molecule, and the other lone pair occupies an sp2 hybrid orbital um, perpendicular and away from the ring. If we move on and look at the resonance, resonance stabilization energies uh, of these different uh, compounds, we look at thiophene, pyridine, pyrrole, and furan, and compare them to the resonance stabilization energy of benzene. We notice that these heterocyclic systems don't have quite as much resonance stabilization energy as benzene. Although you don't need to memorize the data in this table, it's just worth noting uh, qualitatively that these heterocyclic systems are not quite as stable relative to the benzene system. As we all, and as we all know, benzene is quite inert to many reactions. Uh, therefore, the heterocyclic systems may not be quite as inert uh, to, to certain reactions. If we move on and take a look at fused ring systems, uh, first we'll take a look at benzofuran here. Benzofuran is basically benzene fused to furan, um, furan ring. If we move on and take a look at this uh, indole structure, this indole structure is the most important out of all five of these fused ring systems because it makes up the, amine, uh, the side chain of the amino acid tryptophan. And it's basically, its substructure is benzene uh, fused to a parole system. Now it's worth noting because indole here is the side chain of an amino acid. It's worth noting why we're studying these heterocyclos, heterocyclic compounds to begin with because they show up so frequently in bioorganic reactions and biomolecules and we need a good grasp of these before we begin to study these uh, reactions uh, of bioorganic reactions and biomolecules later in the semester. So if we move on to these fused ring systems we see that we see benzothiophene here, which is basically benzene fused to a thiophene ring, and move on and see quinoline and isoquinoline here, which only differ in the position of the nitrogens. Here we have two atom aromatic heterocyclic systems, and we have two different classes shown here. The first class is the azoles, or azoles. <coughs> Of these three structures, we want to key in on the imidazole structure. The imidazole structure is the most important out of these three because it makes up the side chain of the amino acid histidine. If we move on and look at the diazine structures, again, we want to key in on the middle structure, pyrimidine. Now, pyrimidine is the substructure of uh, nucleic acid base pairs, and these, as we all know, are critical uh, to the functioning of life at the molecular level. If we move on and take a look at uh, here a multi-atom aromatic heterocycle and we have the structure of purine. Uh, purine is rapidly in equilibrium between these two structures here shown, shown right here and uh, both, both uh, structures are in, in fact aromatic and we could make a quick count of pi electrons if we needed to to uh, confirm that. So in this slide we're given, this is an old test problem, uh, an exam problem, where we're given the structure of guanine. Again we see a multi-atom fused uh, heterocyclic system. So the first part of this problem says to draw all the lone pairs in the heterocycle. So if we remember that uh, nitrogens want three bonds and one lone pair and oxygens want two bonds and two lone pairs we can click quickly fill in all the lone pairs on the guanine structure as shown here. The second part of the question asked us to consider all the pi electrons in both rings and how many pi electrons are there in all. And note we're not just 
concerned with the pi electrons on the on the ring directly. We need to consider the pi electrons of the atoms appended to the ring. So if we know if we know from our connectivity diagram shown from uh, previous webcasts that a uh, two connected nitrogen only contributes one uh, electron to the aromatic system because the lone pair is in an sp2 hybrid orbital and not uh, conjugated to the ring and that three connected nitrogens uh, do contribute both of their lone pair both electrons in the lone pair to the aromatic system we can make a quick count of all the pi electrons if we start here at this at this nitrogen and make a count of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven pi electrons for the core of this structure and again we need to consider the atoms appended off this molecule so the oxygen is double bonded so it contributes one uh, electron one pi electron also so that would be our twelfth electron and the three connected nitrogen uh, bonded down here is also also has its lone pair in a p orbital and would uh, account for our 13th and 14th uh, pi electron count here. And the third part of this question says circle all the electron lone pairs that are involved in pi bonding. So if we remember again that uh, two connected uh, nitrogens, their lone pairs are not uh, involved in pi bonding because they're in sp2 hybrid orbital orbitals. And the three connected nitrogens their lone pairs are involved in pi bonding because they're in p orbitals. We can quickly circle all the three connected nitrogens because they're involved in pi bonding.